Hi everyone, welcome to the Light Initiation Soul Mastery for Awakened Leaders. And today I'm going to introduce you to really one of my extraordinary friends. She is a profound channel. Um, she really holds the embodiment of the sun. Uh, but before we dive in, I want to take a moment to center you here in this moment with us right now. And we do so by closing our eyes. So close your eyes, close your eyes. And take a nice breath in through your nose, out through your mouth, relaxing your face, your jaws, centering yourself on your chair, slowing down your breathing in a way that is nourishing for you, relaxing arms, feeling yourself sitting on the chair, feel your feet connecting to the earth, and then connect with that radiant crystal inside of the earth. She's allowing you to center yourself even more and she actually gives you exactly what you need in this moment. So allow her radiant light to enter your feet, to enter your energy field and allow it to give you what you need in this moment. Might be a calming, soothing energy, might be an activating energy, just allow to happen whatever's needed right now. And so allow the energy to swirl up from your feet to your knees, all the way up to your pelvis area, centering you in your pelvis area, seeing that bright, big, radiant crystal in the center of your pelvis area, allowing you to ground all of your divinity into your physical experience radiating its light to the front, the sides, all the way back and up, down. And then allow the same energy to go all the way up to your heart center, putting both of your hands on your heart, igniting your divine essence, that golden essence in your heart space, allowing it to radiate fully into the world in the most bright, bright profound energy possible. It is who you are. And then in that centered state, set an intention for this session. What do you want to ignite? What do you want to transform? Let go, awaken to, and breathe into that intention for a moment in that centered heart space. Then take your attention and your awareness to your feet. Connect with the earth. Take a nice breath in through your nose out through your mouth and open your eyes when you are ready. So hi, welcome everyone. And I can't wait to introduce you to my beautiful friend. She really is a soul sister, right? And her name is Solara. So welcome. I'm so excited to have you here. My role on the planet is as a channel. During the course of anyone's life, we change from one role to another. And I'm not talking only about being a child and then being a mother and then being an elder. In our role, my guides talk about three different paths of humans where at any one point in your life, you can be a warrior of the light, stepping out there to be seen, to activate people. You can be a magic weaver where you're showing through your ability to manifest what you want and to weave with the energies of what is available around you, magic, which makes magic for everyone. And you can be a frequency keeper. And I've been aspiring towards being a frequency keeper during my life. But only now in my wisdom years am I able to do that more successfully when things to do with family, things to do with earning money and proving yourself and setting up in the world go into recession in your life and you're able to be more focused just on your own ability to hold light in order to put that light out there. It's much easier to focus when the other parts of your life are, are uh, less demanding, let's say. And so the role that was chosen for me from 1998 was to be a channel. 
And it makes it super, super easy for me to be a frequency keeper because I have these guides working with me. And it's pretty amazing because whether I'm teaching from my normal self, like I would be now, uh, what I'm doing is the same as I would be doing if a group was sitting here with me, whether I'm channeling directly for them or whether I'm working on a healing capacity, it just comes through me because I've learned how to allow that to happen. And uh, it really is a gift. And today um, the guides have chosen to talk about primer tube activation and what that actually means and how that can help us to be any one of those warriors of the light, magic weavers, frequency keepers, and how we can step forward with our gifts and how we can assist others through the transition when we understand prana tube activation better. Can you share more about that? Because, I mean, I'm very curious, what does that mean in reality? I love like, you can feel when you talk, it's just a radiance of energy. So the vibration I can pick up and it would be really great if you can make it more like interweave it with the physical life. Yes. Um, I don't know if I can relate it more with 3D life. Uh, what I will relate it to is spiritual awakening. Spiritual awakening means consciousness expansion. So our consciousness, when it is trapped in 3D, when we are only immersed in the 3D world, we tend to be functioning mainly in the lower three chakras that have to do with survival. The first chakra, survival, home, money, job. The second chakra, sexuality, physical body, physical life, senses, emotions. And the third chakra, personality, self, mind, how we understand ourselves, how we are functioning in terms of I know who I am on a personality level. I'm confident. I feel powerful. I know that I'm free to create my own reality. Or the opposite, I feel like I'm being controlled. I'm in control dramas with various people about who's right and who's wrong. Um, th th these are the three chakras that in earth life, when you are totally trapped in 3D, your consciousness is entrained into those three chakras and you're not able to see or experience how the world really is or who we really are. So in order to experience who we really are, we have to move up in our consciousness into the upper chakras and that used to be the way of awakening. Let's say that was the way that the yogis experienced experienced awakening was through using kundalini shakti kundalini which is basically earth energy to wake up the rest of the chakras from the base of the sleeping serpent at the root chakra until we had this explosive awakening in the third eye and the crown chakras that enabled us to experience oh i am a being of light oh I am connected with everything else. We are all one. And that was the old school way of awakening. It still works. I still teach techniques that involve using that Shakti Kundalini. But the prana tube brings a new level of learning and experience, which is beyond 3D. So the first time a lot of people heard about the prana tube was through Dranvalo Malkizadek when he started putting out the teachings of the flower of life and talking about the Merkaba. And the Merkaba is part of our greater light body. It's on a higher dimensional level, let's say, than our aura. The aspect that I was talking about before relating to the seven internal chakras also relates to the auric field because the auric field, which you can imagine as an egg-shaped bubble of energy, is created by the energy of the chakras. The seven chakras are transmitting energy and they're creating 
layers out into our auric field. The first chakra creates the smallest amount of energy because it's more physical and dense. The last chakra creates the largest amounts of energy. So at the outer crust of our auric field, we have that crown chakra awareness permeating all the way through it. And this teacher, Dranvalo Malkizadek, when he brought attention to this Merkaba field, it's basically a 3D star of David, and there's one point above your head and one point below your body. I won't go into the Merkaba teaching, but he spoke about this tube, which was like an energy breathing tube. I can't remember whether he named it the Prana tube, but basically it rested at the top and the bottom of the Merkaba. And so that was a way to draw energy in from above and below when you had consciousness of that tube. What prana tube activation involves is sending that energy breathing tube up through the top and down through the bottom until it connects into the highest and the lowest, although it's not lower, it's just a different frequency, dimensions that are accessible to us. And that is the first dimension, which is the core crystal in the center of the earth, and the highest, it depends on the system, the model you're using, what you would call it, but in the model I use, it would be called the ninth dimension, which plugs into the great central sun. The great central sun is like the black hole in the center of our Milky Way galaxy, but that black hole is also called the great central sun. And in depictions of our beautiful Milky Way swirling galaxy, you will often get this picture of a sun in the middle. That is the great central sun. And it is the portal through which the highest energy available to us can be downloaded, which is the energy of source. It's the energy of one source of creator of the eternal matrix of what, what some people would call God. It doesn't matter what you call it, but if you understand that our consciousness can expand into a version of consciousness where we understand everything and we have access to all the energies within our galaxy, that is coming through from that higher source of energy. And so my guides teach, uh, they have several different ways of teaching tube activation in order to teach the awakeners and the awakened ones how to consciously plug in to those dimensions. They use this uh, mudra, a mudra wherein those two fingers are touching, but the fingers of one hand point up and the fingers of the other hand point down as a kind of way to encourage our body because mudras make an something energetic happen, and we're encouraging our energy to be totally vertically connected. So there are these two aspects. There is vertical connection and horizontal connection. All day long, we're in horizontal connection, mainly because we are so visually orientated, and through our eyes, we are looking at everything like this, and all of this input that's coming in takes up a lot of our brain energy and our consciousness. And we're talking, doing, acting, interacting in this horizontal plane. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just how we function as human beings. And we can do all of that while staying vertically connected, but most of us lose a lot of our vertical connection while we are so busy, busy, busy. And that's why we take time out to do spiritual practice, to do meditation, etc., in order to remind ourselves of our natural ability to connect vertically with all that is above and all that is below. My guides are, are fond of reminding us that this expression, as above, so below, is half of the expression. And the second half is, as below, so above, because most spiritual people in the new age have this tendency to 
go like that. And to want to connect with guides and higher dimensions and God and source and open the upper chakras and channel and heal and everything. And they don't understand that the connection with all that is below is fundamental to our spiritual awakening. And this is part of the, the pranitude teaching. So um, I never know what my guides are going to do. They might lead us, they're very likely to lead us through an actual primitive activation, um, but sometimes they will teach about it before or after as well. Yeah. And so are we ready to go into that experience? Let's do it. Yes. <laughs> 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 well, always the guides will be tuning in to all of the people that will listen to the transmission and um, I'm doing an opening to channel workshop in Brighton in England in August and they're saying that if one of the listeners would like to invite me to do an opening to channel in Holland, I'm very open to that. <laughs> because they can see some people that are receiving the, the transmission already. I call light to myself now. And ground myself into the heart of Gaia. Open my heart in love and gratitude. And let all energy I have given away or left behind return to me now. And concentrate and expand my energy body. And ask for the highest guidance through me now listening to these opening steps and going like really is that all you have to do and then you can channel and uh, yeah they make you a joke about it first of all it is our great pleasure always when a group of earth beings all tune in to a specific vibration and transmission at one time for we see all of you no matter when you are listening for time is not the same in our dimensions and so we are able to pick up on a vibration even if it happens at several different times in your timeline it is simultaneous to us and so we want you to know that we love you we the star councils of light made of thousands of star beings Arcturian, Lyrian, Pleiadian, Andromedan Syrian, and so forth, assisted by the Hathors. We are here to assist you at this exact juncture in your timeline because you have called for this assistance on a higher self level. That part of you who understands why you are on planet right, Earth right now. That part of you has drawn you into our field of influence to hear these exact words at this time. And this is a wonderful thing, is it not? To know that you are already in cooperation with us, even if you feel that you are meeting us for the first time. This is not the first time that most of you have assisted the earth in raising her vibration. You have been here in this role of awakeners before. 
and you return now at the greatest moment yet. The greatest moment that Earth has ever seen is this one now, this awakening of consciousness, this acceleration of light quotient, the ability of human beings to wake out of the deep slumber of forgetting has happened before, but never in the way that it is happening right now. You have already won the war, if you like to think about it as a war between the light forces and the dark forces. You have already overstepped that point where the victory is there. It is simply a case of waiting for the earth people and the social, financial, religious institutions in your societies to crumble and rebirth. This is the stage that you are at now. And we will mention that that which you call the coronavirus is not from our perspective something that was always meant to be as a part of your healing and awakening. It is simply that the crisis that presents has been used by the light and the dark forces in their own particular ways. And all plans of dumbing you down, all plans to stop you from your awakening process have backfired so that you awaken faster, so that you join with each other more, so that you move towards the state of love, kindness, and cooperation, that you remember from times where there were golden ages on your planet, times in Lemuria and Atlantis. And our lesson today on Prana Tube activation is because you are lacking in the actual energetic skills, the energy ABCs. Where the teaching of for example, yoga has gone on your planet towards the more physical aspect of yoga teachings. We wish to bring you back towards the more energetic learnings so that you can consciously work with your own energy systems as part of your awakening. Let us stress that it is not that it is needed that you do these energy techniques in order to awaken fully. You could simply decide to be happy, decide to live in a state of love and gratitude, decide to choose kindness as your primary way of being. And these simple ways would take you into full awakening also. It is just that this is not happening effectively on your planet. For simply trying to be loving and kind is not working for most of you. Simply trying to forgive those who have harmed you and move into a state of one heart or higher heart absolute compassion for others is not working for most of you. And thus it is that these specific energy techniques help you to get there, help you to move into a state of loving compassion for yourself and all others. And so we begin. 
we ask you to close your eyes now and to place one or both hands on your heart space, center of the chest. And we ask you to slow your breath down, to smile, and to visualize your heart center as a beautiful flowing vortex or bowl of emerald green energy. And to smile and to feel gratitude for this center of your being, for the existence of your heart chakra. This personal heart chakra is Anahata. And as you focus on emerald green, it opens, opens, opens. And a feeling within you of melting open into bliss arises now. We wish you to say out loud, Anahata. For the voicing of the name of the heart chakra opens you also. The four ah sounds of pleasure and opening and love help you to feel the energy here. And now separating your hands so that one is higher than the other in your heart space. Focus on the higher heart. And the higher heart, Amun, the sacred heart, opens into a wonderful rose pink flowing energy. And we wish you to feel how this rose pink is a higher frequency than the green. How it is lighter and how it is more expensive if you allow it to be. This is the energy of compassion, of unconditional love. It is a Christed energy. If you visualize the energy that flowed from Jesus Christ, the energy of love for all other beings, this is the energy that you access now. It is a higher self chakra. And when you are connected with that highest, wisest, most beauteous part of yourself, you are in your higher heart. And we ask you to relax one hand and with the other, tap three times between, in that junction between the higher heart and the personal heart. And joyfully affirm, the one heart is active in me now. And as you relax both hands now, there is a crystalline turquoise frequency exploding open within your heart space. And we are assisting you with this experience now. The one heart, your higher dimensional heart center is always there but not always active, and we assist you in activating that now. It is flowing open. And this, once again, is a higher frequency, a lighter frequency, a frequency which does not mix on a physical cell level. 
but which exudes through you and beyond you as part of your higher dimensional self. And as you access this turquoise frequency, diamond-like in its nature, you are ready to experience your own primer tube, which is made of this exact frequency. It is a crystalline tube or channel, two or more centimeters in diameter that flows through all of your chakric wheels. And so we ask you to use the prana tube activation mudra. And this is with your four fingers and thumbs touching, fingers of one hand pointing up and the other down. It matters not which. And you may place these over your body, exclaiming joyfully, I activate my prana tube now. <clears throat> and you may relax your hands now while you visualize a crystalline energy breathing tube flowing up from your heart, through your throat, third eye crown chakra, up through the cosmic star portal at the top of your aura, and up through the galaxy, through the stars, into the great central sun, visualizing the Milky Way galaxy above you and that beautiful sun-like portal above, plugging in now to the great central sun, allowing that tube to flow down now from your heart space, down through the solar plexus, through the sacral chakra, through the root, through the earth star portal at the bottom of your aura and into the core crystal of Gaia, deep below you, the womb of your planet. And we wish you to perceive that you are plugged in, for this is what is happening energetically. You are plugging in to the highest aspect of your dimensional world and to the lowest, deepest, most profound aspect of your dimensional world. You are a multi-dimensional being designed to plug in to the first and the ninth dimensions in this way, in order to charge and heal yourself, in order to expand your consciousness, in order to work through higher dimensional levels and not only on the level of 3D. We wish you to experience this prana tube as a transparent, luminescent, crystalline tube. Feel the energies which flow through this tube now from above and below into your heart space, using your breath to pull this energy in. With every in-breath, pulling the energy in from above and below. And with every out-breath, feeling this higher dimensional energy moving through your physical cells awakening you, bringing the higher dimensional energy into your DNA in every cell, every atom of your being. Breathing this energy in from above the great central sun, through your crown, into your heart, from below the core crystal, through your root, into your heart. 
bringing this higher dimensional energy into your being. And it stimulates within your DNA the memory of who you truly are on a multidimensional level. You are allowing, indeed, a download, a download of codes that remind you who you truly are. And is this not wonderful that simply through activating your prana tube in this way, you can connect yourself with all that is above and all that is below and bring a remembering into your genetics of who you truly are. You can do this Prana tube activation at any time as part of your spiritual practice. We advise you to do it in places where the energy is as clear and as high as possible. This does not mean that you need to visit the Himalayas. You can be in a city where the energies are extremely dense and simply find a space in your own apartment or house or garden that you clear as much as possible on an energetic level, perhaps placing crystals in the corners, north, south, east and west in this way placing yourself in a sacred medicine wheel, the perfect place in order to connect with all that is above and all that is below to charge yourself and to bring into your very center, your heart space, a remembering of who you truly are. This will assist you on your spiritual path to activate your gifts, to remember your gifts. It will assist you on a physical level to heal your body and to balance all aspects of your personality self so that you are not misfiring on a personality level, so that you are able to shine the light of who you truly are. And we hope that we have assisted you with this short lesson on prana tube activation. There are many teachings through us that you will enjoy. And this is one of our primary lessons. Namaste. So, love and thank you, thank you to the guys. Um, how did you experience that, Sigrid? It was, I loved it because I really opened up, right? So I want the whole experience. And, and you know, right, I've been tuning into many frequencies, but you have a very specific, I think you hold the star, right? It's very different from my own, yet uh, recognizable. So it holds a very high, delightful energy. And I could like, for me, the actual going up, I couldn't stop going up and I was up and then we had to go down. I was like, oh, I, I really had to like, I really had to kind of pull myself together and say like, oh, come on back. And it was as good, but because it went so, I went so far, I really kind of had to like get myself uh, back. But it was so profound, yet simple to apply and so it's done, right? It feels like, and it, it is done. And so from such a clear, fun, easy, beautiful, delightful energy, it's just so easy to access. And actually when we start talking today, I could feel like it's kind of new kind of centeredness within you. And I feel that calling too. It's a new centeredness, really centering into like co into the co-creation with the earth and the divine 
and ourselves. And it just, I could like, when you came on, I could see it. I already experienced it within myself. Um, do you recognize that too? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, I totally get what you're saying. And um, I'm fascinated. I'm completely fascinated by the way that our guides and higher self can take what we like doing and what our gifts are and make a, a meld of it for us to transmit that is very individual to that. And so um, I took, as I never prepare for anything like this, but before the interview, I got Sigrid to remind me, what are the actual words that you're using? And she said, it's still soul mastery, but I've called it light initiation. And so the guides will take the light initiation and teach something that is very specific to that. And the light initiation that we're receiving at the moment is higher dimensional codes. It's about that. And then I'm always interested how the guides teach things in a different way according to the audience, because they don't always teach prana tube activation by going through that three level heart thing. Sometimes they do. And this time they were personal heart green, higher heart pink, then the diamond light. And I kind of wondered where they were going with it. And then they said, if you take what you're experiencing as that turquoise crystalline diamond light, now imagine this crystalline tube. They never did that. It's the first time I ever taught that. And I, I just love the way they can add these new things that, um, that, that are just super cool. I could think, why didn't they do that before? Because that was a really good trick, but they're basically always finding tricks. They call them tricks, not because they're deceptive tricks, but they say it's like a toolbox. It's like this huge chest. And they're giving like little cool things to put in the toolbox to use. Yeah. And then, um, in the, the special offer for this webinar is a reduction in the price of the new Stepping into the Light at-home course that I've produced that I'm super happy with. I almost feel like it's the first time I have understood in my own mind the different aspects that I've been teaching for these years and how they can come together, yeah. how the pranic and Kriya work can come together in a stepping into the light process, which is our awakening process. And interesting to me, the pranayama stroke Kriya, like a yogic awakening technique that the guides chose for that course, and they will choose something by looking into the energy fields of all of the human beings on the whole planet and what is most needed. And then also they can see every single person that will ever do the stepping into light over the next year, two years or whatever. They can see all of those people and they'll choose something to teach that helps the most people getting into the light is mainly focused on healing those first two chakras, three chakras that I mentioned in the beginning, all of those issues. Do, how many spiritual awakeners do you know that are struggling either with something physical, sexual, her, and the first, the root chakra, home, money, job, is the biggest thing that most people are still struggling with. It's supposed to be like the first step of our spiritual evolution, but most of the people um, including the people that are totally lost and have no idea what they're supposed to be doing, and those that are actively teaching and healing and are, you know, acting as leaders, still struggling with those things. Yeah. Um, and so it completely fascinates me how they can look at us on an energy level and work out what will help us. Um, it's just uh, amazing to me. I'm so grateful for these guys. I would have died of boredom on earth if I hadn't had them. 
yeah. And it's, I'm actually fascinated by, because we said like, yes, it's for awakened leaders. And so I'm fascinated by the fact that what you're sharing now, the step into, it's, it sounds as if it's made for the people watching this, right? It's like so much close to what is needed, what people are looking for, what is next. So I think that is extraordinary. Do you want to share more about the actual offer? I'll share more about the course because it's the first time that I've done it. And um, the things that I've put previously that a lot of your watchers got into last time were recordings of webinars. So it would be, let's say, like a session like this or a webinar that was teaching about chakras. And so you're listening to that. This time I started off with some recordings from the Stepping Into the Light uh, retreat that I did in March. Now it is a 12 day retreat. You have to dedicate a minimum of two hours for 12 to 13 days. In reality, that the people that are doing it sometimes take a little bit longer than that. And at the end of it, on the 13th day or a bit further on if you've taken longer, you get a one on one session with me and the guides, which I stopped doing ages ago because I just decided I didn't want to do one on ones. But my guides have forced me to step out of my comfort zone because only once I was in the process of it, I then was being guided and I had to follow the guidance. And the guidance is on the last day, you get a one-on-one -on -one session with the guides so that they can see what's happened to you energetically from the beginning to the end and what it is that you need to either have in terms of healing or chakra opening or know in terms of what the next steps are. So for me, it's like um, phenomenal what they're offering. It's, uh, I, you know, I don't feel like it's me who's offering it. I feel like it's the star councils of light have put this thing together and they're offering it. And I think it's an incredible gift. So thank you so much for being here. Um, I yes. believe, like, really, like, that is a really amazing offer you were sharing, right? So, I love that. Thank you for that. So, thank you so much for being here, for your offer. Thank you so much. And thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sigrid. Thank you so much for watching, and we will talk to each other tomorrow. Much love. Bye.